Fuck. Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got the latest in the Garrison series from Springfield Armory. It's the 4.25 inch in 45 ACP. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis Axe and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links, it will often save you money never will cost you any additional money and helps the channel. And please consider supporting the channel on Player, formerly Utreon, where we can do some types of videos that are no longer allowed on YouTube. The one happening to sit behind it is the five inch in blued. The one in the front here is the four and a quarter. And this series is available in two chamberings, nine and 45 ACP. It's also available in stainless and blued. The one at the back is a nine millimeter. It holds nine rounds. The 45 ACP in the two different variants holds four, uh, seven rounds. And we'll put a link to the video. We did a review on this one when it first came out, which would be the 9mm. So I'm going to set this guy aside because this video is about the new one. And Springfield was kind enough to send this. It's a very recent release that, that just came out. And this is, as I mentioned earlier, a continuation of the Garrison series. The Garrison is a little less expensive than some of the others like the TRP, but I would, there's no way I would even remotely call this a budget gun. It is less expensive, but there's no budget characteristics about it. It's a nice gun, it's got tight tolerances, all sorts of features, you know, skeletonized hammer that you would expect on, honestly on a much more expensive gun. So the MSRP is 917 on the stainless version and it's 868 on the blued version but they have features that I would expect to be paying $1,500, $1,600, $1,700 for, quite honestly. So you can see that there's very nice checkering on the back strap. It is a 1911, so of course the back straps are not replaceable. Nice wood grips, well checkered. A smooth front strap. This does stay in your hand quite well. I mentioned the skeletonized, skeletonized hammer, and it has serrations at the rear. This is a more classic 1911, and it doesn't have tactical features such as a Picatinny rail or front serrations. This is more the classic streamlined, smooth 1911 look. It's got a very large, easy to reach thumb safety, very easy to thumb on and off. It's only on one side, so it's not an ambi safety, which depending on your hands, that can be a benefit because oftentimes the one on the other side will bite into your hand. Of course, that problem's solved here, that's not there. And you'll see that it's got a matte finish on the top that cuts down glare. So that when you're trying to sight down what's actually a very nice set of sights, nice three dot sights, you can easily see the sights and you won't pick up glare. It's one nice thing about having the matte finish on a stainless steel gun. It's kind of a brushed look on most of the stainless steel. The grips are wood. So very well, nicely done gun. The trigger is skeletonized and there's very little side to side. So it's a very nice trigger. In fact, let's go ahead and demonstrate that trigger. So minimal take up, just a hair of take up. A very, very short crisp break. You'll notice there is an adjuster screw so I can adjust the trigger, but out of the box, this trigger was just the way I like it. There's no reason for me to touch it. There's the reset. I bounced a little bit. And then again, a nice short crisp break. So it's got an awesome trigger. You come to expect that from 1911s. Springfield has done a very good job of making this trigger one of the best 1911 triggers I've handled. And in some cases, better than some much more expensive guns that I've handled. It is a GI style guide rod. So this can be disassembled just by pushing this down and flipping this to the side. So it's the bushing to the side. So it's easy to take down, it's easy to maintain, it's easy to live with. Overall, quite nice. Notice dovetail front sight, do dovetail rear sight, so the sights are more easily replaced than older designs of 1911s. And you've got a little bit of serrations on the hammer if you do want to thumb it back. It's easy to get a hold of. 
And again, I don't know if I'd be inclined to replace these three dot sights because they're actually quite nice. But if you wanted night sights or something like that, that's where you would move into a replacement. The other thing I'll note is there is no side to side play on the slide. It is nice and tight, yet at the same time, it's super smooth. So they were able to get the tight tolerances with zero slop in it, but still maintain a nice, smooth, easy to pull slide. No hang up, no grit, no scratchiness. It's not difficult at all. And I noticed that same smoothness on the prior blued one, the, the other one that I had in the video, it was equally smooth. So if you get the blued version, you're not gonna lose anything. So I'm, I wanna show you the internals uh, to keep the video from being too long. I'm just gonna stop the video. I'm gonna take it apart and then pick it up with it disassembled. This is quite easy to take apart. There really are no tricks to it, but when you look at it, everything is well machined from the takedown pin slash slide stop slide release. The barrel bushing is very well machined and smooth, even on the parts you're not gonna see. It's just well done from end to end. If you look at the slide, it's a classic 1911 profile. This is a would be the equivalent of a 70 series. It does not have the drop safety plunger, but 1911s are inherently drop safe because you've got the combination of the thumb safety and the grip safety. Nice long rails on the frame. And of course the frame is stainless. Just well machined. Everything's smooth. I don't see any tool marks, any chatter. Some of what you see here is, you know, it's a stainless steel gun. If you don't get them perfectly clean, they show things. But everything is just well done. The barrel is very nicely machined and polished. It has a machine polished feed ramp. So fed, it fed everything we, we put through it, put a couple different varieties of ammo through it. And of course, as you, as you would expect, the rifling is very clean, sharp, crisp. It is conventional rifling, which is typical for a 1911 but very well done. It's one of the things that you know, when I look at, when I look at the Springfield 1911s, for the price here that a particular gun is in, you seem to be getting the features and capabilities that another manufacturer would put in the next price tier up. So for roughly an MSRP of around 900, depending on which variation you pick, you're getting features and quality and machining and tolerances that would generally put you in a $1,500, $1,600 gun in a different manufacturer. And that's one thing I like about Springfield's 1911s. And I've, I've had several of them. And actually, I still have every Springfield 1911 that I've ever bought. I don't get rid of them because they just work. I like them. And I've never had any trouble with them. You know, a 1911 does require a little more care and feeding than something like a Glock. But even the, the Springfield 1911s, they almost behave more like Glocks as far as reliability and not needing to have a lot of tweak, tweaking and tuning and playing with ejectors and extractors. You pretty much take them out of the box, oil them, clean them, maintain them, and they just work. Let me stop for a minute, get this little critter put back together so that we can resume. A couple other things I didn't mention yet, but it goes to the, the features that you're getting. The, the slide and the frame are forged, so they're not cast. The barrel is forged. so. High-end manufacturing processes on a reasonably priced 1911. Yeah, it's not $400, $500 like the Polymer Wonders, but for an all-metal gun with that level of tolerances and machining quality, that's actually kind of unusual. It also has an extended beaver tail, so you're not going to get hammer or slide bit by this. Even if you have really large hands, you, you'd have to have really, really big hands to get out there. And of course, I already mentioned that easy-to-use extended thumb safety and it doesn't bite into you, it doesn't really have any sharp edges, it's just smooth and easy to use. I realized after I finished the video, before I wrapped up, that I omitted an important detail. What was this like to shoot at the range? It was an absolute pleasure to shoot at the range. It functioned correctly from round one to the last round. It was smooth. Uh, shooting a 1911 is always a pleasure. You actually feel the machine working in your hands as the slide moves and everything else. The sights were easy to pick up and see. Overall, the shooting experience on this was as good as the experience of actually looking at it. So I really appreciate Springfield Armory sending us this to review. I was, a, I was expecting it to be a good gun, and of course it exceeded my expectations, which is what I've become used to. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Player, and Rumble. We're pretty much everywhere. And thank you.